everybody! Welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Ara, and happy Adams Family October. This October, I'm going to be making five videos over my Adams Family House, starting with this one, which will be the addition of Cousin It's Room. I will show you a little bit of how I made the inside of the room, but mostly I'm going to be focusing on this aged copper roof technique. I hope you guys enjoy this first video. Let's get started. only place I really have left to build on the Adams Family Mansion is this area above the conservatory. Recently I made the Uncle Fester edition, it's that one over there with the triangle roof. I will link that video down below if you want to see how I typically build my walls that become an addition. But instead of boring you with that again in this video, I pre-made the box with the same steps using foam board and mat board to strengthen the walls. And I'm just going to go ahead and skip all of that, but you can definitely check out that video if you're interested. Thankfully, Cousin It is rather short and is shown having a room with a very low ceiling, so I didn't have to do too much with this roof part. I could just build it so that it fit under the adjacent roof. Here's a closer up view of the room box itself. You can see from the measurement, it is, as I said, five and a half inches tall, which is perfect for Cousin It, but not so much anybody else. I also added in two windows to help light get into this room. Another thing I did ahead of time was take the fabric and the wallpaper that I was interested in using. I made templates for them to fit in there perfectly and I cut that out of poster board and then I just attached the fabric and the scrapbook paper to the poster board so I can just slip them in super easily and glue them down. Here you can see the patterns and colors that I chose. Cousin It is typically shown as a very stylish guy with a clean put together room. So I wanted to make sure that I reflected that in this build. I'm gonna go ahead and put in all the different pieces that I pre-cut. If you're interested on how I make my templates for putting the wallpaper onto, I have a long running live stream series where I did a lot about wallpaper and template making. It's over the Fairfield house. You can find it in my live stream playlists. Before I put these pieces in permanently, I realized that I needed to add a door so that everyone could get into Cousin It's room. This is going to be a fake door and it's going to be inset into the foam board on the side of the room build. And then it's going to be just pasted onto the wall inside the Adams Family House. I will show you that so it makes more sense. All I did was cut the piece out of the wallpaper and then I went ahead and traced it on the back of the foam board, making sure that my pattern was backwards so I didn't mess it up. And then I'm gonna cut it out with my X-Acto. I forgot to do this before I glued everything together, but it wasn't too bad of a procedure because I hadn't already added the wallpaper. So now that that's done, I can go ahead and take my tacky glue and glue all of these pieces in, making sure that I line them up to the best of my ability. Once they are all in somewhere throughout this video, I'm going to be adding floorboards, crown molding, and pieces of wood to the corners. So if it's not 100% exact, it will cover up any of those mistakes. Now I did realize I had not pre-prepared the ceiling, so I'm going to do that now. I decided I wanted to have wide ceiling boards and I'm taking um, poster board that was cut at three quarter inch thick and I'm gluing them down to another piece of poster board. Then I'm just going to paint that over with a medium brown and this is what's going to be my ceiling. Again, I'm going to glue that in with some tacky glue, make sure I get all the way into the corners. And I think this makes a nice contrast to the rest of the room, which is really bright. It gives it more of an aged look because it has a wood ceiling. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and work on that door. I am going to be using a paneling effect similar to the way I did in the captain's quarters recently. If you're unfamiliar with that video, I will link it down below, but it shows you how I use poster board to make wood paneling. I'm gonna be doing that same thing here, except it's going to be on a door instead of a wall. 
For this door, I am going to be making two of them, but for this door, I am making sure that I leave space on the base poster board around it because I'm going to be adding some trim around the door. I'm going to be using some scissors just to cut that out. You can also use an X-Acto knife. And I did realize that the side of this scissors says fabric. If you um, get worried about that, don't worry. These scissors have been downgraded to paper. They just still say fabric. Don't worry. I'm not using fabric scissors on paper. So here you can see the paneled effect that was created by following my process. The way that I'm going to make this door look like it is inset into the wall is that it's going to be glued on the outside of the foam board. Before I do that, however, I do want to make sure that I paint it. Like I said, I wanted to make two of these. One of them is going to be for inside the room and one is going to be inside the Adams Family Mansion. The one that I made sure, actually both of them, you want to make sure you leave uh, like half inch around the door. Um, for this one, it's because you want to add the trim. This is going to be the one that sits inside the mansion and I want it to look like it has been trimmed out like a door would be. The other one, you need the trim around the door so that you can glue it on the outside of the foam board. You're just going to glue it straight onto the outside. It will glue flat, but it will look as though it is inset into the wall. And then you can add trim around it just like we did the other one, but this will be on the inside of the foam board wall and it will make it look as though your door has been trimmed and might even open. This one doesn't, obviously. Um, I hate doing that, but this was the easiest way for me to add this on. I will also be adding baseboards and crown molding painted in the same brown color off camera to save time, but again, uh, in my live stream, I go over that pretty clearly, so you can check that out if you're interested. So here you can see the door inside of Cousin It's room. It's going to butt up against this part of the Adams Family House. This is the library that is adjacent to Gomez's office. So the other door that we framed is going to go on the inside of the wall next to the bookcase. I want to make sure that I line it up so that the bottom of the door matches up with the bottom of the room. Once it's all glued in, I just use the same tacky glue. I made sure and measured it, make sure to put it in straight as possible. Here's the door. Now you'll notice that it's kind of floating up off the ground, which is okay. Um, I kind of like that. It adds a little interest to this area, but what we need to do is add a step. So I measured from the floor to the bottom of the door and it was about an inch and a half so I decided to make half inch steps you can see based on my half inch grid here that each step is about a half inch up and then I also created these three boards out of basswood that are just a little bit wider than a half inch so it has a lip once it's glued down onto the staircase I'm using tacky glue here and um, it doesn't really matter that these are different materials or different colors because I'm going to end up painting them anyway. I'm using my grid on the mat to make sure that everything is as straight as possible, but these are okay if they're just a little bit crooked. Remember this is the Adams Family House. Nothing has to be perfect. To match the wood color that's already existing inside of the, the existing part of the house, it is a little bit of a darker wood color, so I'm going to use a base coat of black over the stairs, and then I'm going to add that same brown on top of the black. That's going to make this wood piece just a little bit darker to try and match the inside of the mansion. When I used the brown straight onto the lighter color wood, it did make a lighter brown. So I just wanted to make sure that I was being cohesive when adding a piece inside the existing mansion. So here is the steps in place right under the door. I will do a little bit more aging to the door itself to bring out some of the paneling. Um, but yeah, I do on this one on the inside, I did a little bit more aging as well. And now you can see I have added the baseboards, the crown molding, and then just a little piece of wood in the back there. But it's looking a little bit more like a room at this point.
Now it's time to work on the roof itself. I decided to create a faux copper roof because I did not want to try and recreate the shingling job that I did previously. I wasn't sure I could exactly match it. So, but I, th I mean, I thought this would be a fun idea to try and figure out how to do it. I'm going to be using cardstock as my copper and then painting it once I'm done. To recreate the ridges that you often see in copper roofs, I am going to be folding the cardstock before I apply it to the roof itself. I marked off a two inch area and I'm just going to be folding that two inch piece over long ways. And I forgot to mention that the width of this piece of cardstock itself is just enough so that there's a little overhang at the bottom of the roof. Now I'm going to mark a quarter inch piece at the top so that I can fold it back accordion style to create a little quarter inch um, ridge on the top of this copper roof. Now after doing this I did think probably would have been better to make it even smaller and maybe make an eighth inch ridge would probably be more appropriate but I really wanted these ridges to stand out and be a big feature of this roof so I'm okay with the larger ones but I do think it probably look more in scale if it was a little bit smaller. Once I've created those folds I have a piece that sticks out like this. Now I'm going to go two inches at a time creating these folds until I have the entire piece folded with several ridges. I realized here that my eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock is not going to reach to the end. So in order to fix this, to make it a seamless transition from one piece to another, I am going to be cutting that edge off of the first piece and then I'm going to take a second piece and bend up a flap at the end that's about a quarter inch and I'm going to insert that underneath the ridge of the old piece of paper. Then I can just take some tacky glue, glue those two pieces together and continue to create ridges for as long as I need to get to that end of the roof. I end up only needing one more ridge for this one, but if you do have a longer project, this could really keep going on forever and just keep adding more paper. Now that my ridge paper is complete, I can add tacky glue to the roof itself. I decided to glue down one half at a time. This is so I can focus on each ridge, making sure that it is lined up. I wanna make sure that it is lined up with the top of the roof and I want, also wanna make sure that they are straight as possible. It can get a little wonky because it is almost like working with an accordion because it does kind of stretch and move. So that's why I decided to do one half at a time. Another thing I wanna add here is that I did not smooth out my glue. And at first I thought this wasn't a problem, but you will see I have one particular panel there that ends up bubbling. So if you do decide to do this process, I do suggest you take like a an old gift card or something and smooth out your glue so that the glue underneath your paper is as smooth as possible. Once the glue has taken hold and I get to the end of the roof, I can just use my scissors to cut straight along the roof line and um, it, I do t struggle a little bit to cut through the ridge, but it does cut through and I will show you how to cover that up when we get to the corners of the roof. This side gets a little bit more complicated because of the windows, but it's not too difficult <laughs> once I figure out how to do it. I decided to go ahead and pre-cut the corner piece because I want the two ridges on the corners to match up. So I just laid my unglued piece down on the roof and then I made sure and drew a line where I wanted it to cut. I just thought that would make a nice detail and I'll show you what I mean by that. I have this ridge that I cut through on the first side and I just wanted it to match up on the second side. I th just think that looks nice. In order to create holes for the windows, I just kind of held the ridged paper where I thought it was probably going to end up. I put a pencil on the inside and just drew around the inside of the windows. So this is the back of the paper that you're looking at at the moment. I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife and just cut those out. They don't end up fitting perfectly, but it is a good start, and I do end up putting window frames over them so you can't see that it's not exactly perfect. 
I followed the same steps here where I glued down half of the paper at a time so I could really focus on those ridges trying to get them as perpendicular as possible. And if I did have any paper that overlapped the window openings, I just went back with a very sharp X-Acto blade and cut out any remaining paper. And also on the end here, I just took my scissors and cut off the excess. Now I decided that I needed to kind of taper the ridges at the top because I'm going to be putting a um, piece over the top. What do I want to call it? Like flashing is the technical roof term. So here's our flashing. It's a three quarter inch piece of paper that's cut in half. And then I pinched up the center to kind of make it look uh, similar to the ridges. And um, because we cut down some of the tops of the ridges, that's what we needed to do in order for this to fit over the top of the ridges. Now, if you initially make smaller ridges, this is not such a big deal, but the fact that my ridges are huge, I needed to cut them down just a little bit at the top. I'm going to add these with tacky glue. The first one I'm putting on is directly onto the corner and it is going over those two ridges that meet in the middle. And I'm just kind of pushing it down and forcing it to do what I want. I don't know if this is exactly how it should be, but um, I do know that with roofing you just want to make sure that um, you cover up any holes <laughs> where water might get in. So that's what I'm thinking through as we go through. Uh, I don't try to go for exact realism when it comes to architecture, but I do like to give the impression that maybe it could function. <laughs> now I'm working at the top of the side. I made the exact same piece, but I realized again that my ridges were just a little too tall for this paper to cover, and so I'm snipping the paper at just like maybe an eighth inch to a quarter inch um, deep snip so that once I push the paper down, it kind of allows for the ridge to jut out just a little bit. I will give you a closer up view of this. Um, I don't know if this is making a lot of sense, but if you do try this and um, you do put that flashing piece at the top, you will see that you just need a little room for those ridges. For the outside window frames, I used some foam board covered with mat board, and within the foam board I cut out notches so that it would make room for the ridges to go into it. And if I have any extra room, I'm just going to fill that with some spackle later on, but um, I didn't want to squish down my ridges, so I just made room within the window frame for the ridges, if that makes sense. Now I do wish that the ridges uh, kind of hit the windows in the same places, but I didn't really think through the design that much. That's just how they ended up, which is okay. It's not a big deal, but I do have one ridge hitting a window on the left side and one kind of hitting it in the center. Now I'm going to be taking my dollar store spackle, which has performed better than almost any other product like this I have used, so way to go Dollar Tree. <laughs> Uh, but any extra space that is left, any holes, anything, um, even including where I snipped the top of the ridges, if those are kind of showing, I want to fill that with the spackle so that I don't have any holes in my roof. Unless you do want a holy roof, you can go for that. But I'm going to let that spackle dry before I put my first coat of paint. And the first coat of paint is going to be black because my roofing is black and even though this is going to be a different type of roof, I want to keep similar colors. Here on the side you can see a little bit of that bubbling. Some of that does calm down after the paint dries, but um, if you're good with your glue first, you'll be okay. I'm going to be using some brown and some bronze metallic paint to create this roof. And first I am going to be brushing some brown all over the roof. And it's okay with me if a little bit of the black shows through. I find it really interesting the different techniques you can get with metallic paint when it goes over different colors. You still see the bronziness of it, but it kind of changes it a little bit. 
here I am starting to add the bronze on top of the brown paint. And I'm going to do this all over eventually. I just wanted to show in this instance how it really starts to look like copper. I said bronze, but it's copper. It's The name of the paint is antique copper. I'm sorry about that. And here you can see it on the entire roof. Again, you will see those puckers on the paper. A lot of that calms down, but some of it stays. So in your glue process, just make sure you're really careful with getting that glue flattened out. One, This side looks much better, so I don't know what I messed up on that other side. So now that it's entirely copperized, if that's a word, it's probably not, I'm going to be using some really bright lime green paint um, because if I go back to my reference you can see that there's a lot of bright greens and turquoises that show up when a copper roof is really aged. So what I'm doing is taking some lime green paint and I'm adding in a lot of water. This is going to seem like I am just covering up all of the copper but I promise you will see some of it come through in the end and really when a roof is really old sometimes you can't see anything but bright green or like a turquoise color so this is the watered down paint I'm adding on here and then I am also going to do some really big drips I like the way drips look some people might think this is a little over the top and of course if you're doing this process you can do it however you like to whatever degree you like and I did want to show that these windows were really really fun to play around with the aging I really enjoyed that part here you can see there's still a lot of that copper showing through and it does depend a lot on how the light is shining onto the roof. Now I'm going to be using, it's called Caribbean blue I think, but any type of turquoise, I just like using lots of different colors. This really will bring your piece to life because if people are just seeing maybe just a couple colors it's nice it's probably a good effect but when you start adding in a lot of different colors it will really bring your piece to life and I'm even using some different techniques where I'm using a paper towel to dab it on instead of just using a brush only I did a little bit less with the turquoise than I did the bright green but of course again if you do your own you can use whichever color more that you like Finally, I'm going to take some watered down black paint because this is supposed to be the Adams Family House, which has a lot of age and wear and tear, and so I wanted to make sure that it wasn't too, too bright, especially since it's going to be sitting next to my very dark shingles. So I'm going back with my watered down black and just adding a lot of dirt and grime to the roof. And this is again a delicate balance of trying to make sure I don't cover up all that work I did on the greens, but also trying to make sure that this roof looks correct for the house. I may also go back to the house itself and add some of these greens and blues here and there to help incorporate the roof into the rest of the house. But that's the fun part about art is just trying to make it all look like it's supposed to go together even though it was made over a large span of time. Here's the final roof sitting in place. It was really fun to create. I think I will use this process again. It's a lot I like it a lot better than doing a million shingles, but you guys will have to let me know what you think. I will have to create the windows themselves at a later time. I ran out of time this week, but I will create windows for Cousin It. We, he needs some furniture and he needs, I don't know, maybe like a bow tie rack or something. If you guys have ideas, let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys really enjoyed this first installment of Adam's Family October, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!